the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Wait. 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 That's it. That's what we don't like about the Advent season. Having to wait, right? Wanting to sing the Christmas carols we dearly love now, and the church says, wait. Eager to, to see the crash now with the cows and the donkey, the shepherds and their sheep, Mary and Joseph, yes, and the babe lying in the manger. But, but oh no, we have to wait for that. And the wreaths and bows and poinsettias adorning and beautifying our sanctuary. Oh no, not yet. Wait. That's the problem with Advent. It bids us to wait to prepare ourselves, to wait with expectation. But most everybody hates waiting. In our 21st century world, which applause, applauds reaching our destination as fast as possible and getting the job done quickly, and shortcuts, and yes, instant gratification, Advent, with its call that we wait, is counter-cultural. The world doesn't want to have to wait for Christmas to come, and it won't. So it's been celebrating Christmas for many weeks already. And the church, well, it's been waiting with impatience, indeed, exasperation, and maybe, yes, doubt for Christ's second coming, waiting for 2,000 long years now, and it hasn't happened yet. We're still waiting. Well, the first point I'd like to make this morning about waiting is that there are at least two different kinds of waiting. The first is what I call bored waiting, bored waiting. You're waiting for your appointment in the doctor's office, and there isn't even a magazine to look at because of concern about virus contamination. And you forgot your cell phone and left it home. Or remember the days pre-pandemic when you would ask the host or, or hostess at the restaurant how long the wait would be, and when you heard 50 minutes, you grimaced and stomped out. Bored waiting can be painful. Each minute seems like 10. But then, thankfully, there's what I call active waiting. Active waiting. For the dentist or doctor's appointment, you bring with you the latest book you're reading, the one you can't put down. And way too soon, you're being called for your appointment. Can I, can I at least finish this chapter? You ask, or I've discovered the smartphone app called Duolingo, with which I'm learning to speak Spanish. And I get so involved 
learning Spanish on my cell phone, that, that 45 minutes pass in what seems like less than 10. Time does seem to fly when you're engrossed in something, engaged, occupied, busy. In today's reading from 2 Peter, I hear the author calling us, calling God's people, calling Christ's followers to active waiting for Jesus' second coming by being engaged and, yes, occupied and busy with the good works of God. Yes, we believe that when Christ shall come again, all the promises of God will be fulfilled totally, and God's kingdom will be established completely. But let us not forget that we we are God's instrument now. Now. Contributing to God's promises in the here and now. We are participating in the second coming of Christ. That hasn't happened yet. But we are participating in our works of love now. A very important way God keeps God's promises is through our efforts, our efforts to heal, comfort, help, and bring justice. In this reading from 2 Peter, the author describes these works that we do as hastening, hastening the coming of the day of God. In last Sunday's sermon, I mentioned several possibilities from, from Zooming with a lonely friend to, well, the list of loving acts is endless. I've come across a countdown to Christmas calendar, a countdown to Christmas calendar, something like an Advent calendar, but not, not specifically Christian. It's called the Kindness Calendar, the Kindness Calendar. Perhaps Scott, our parish administrator, can include this calendar in this week's newsletter. By way of example, today's suggestion is this. Listen wholeheartedly to others without judging them. And tomorrow's entry, be generous. Feed someone with food, love, or kindness today. For each day of December, there is a suggestion for what I call active waiting, staying busy with God's work, and in so doing, not becoming bored. One last thought. When it comes to Jesus coming, Jesus' advent in our lives, in the here and now, there's good news for us. We never, we never have to wait, never, for Jesus to come to us. Jesus is only a prayer away, only a Bible reading away, only a worship service away, only an Advent devotion away, only an act of forgiveness away, only a charitable act away. We never have to wait for the light and love of Jesus to come to us. Never have to wait for the comfort and hope Jesus brings to come to us. Never have to wait 
for Jesus' presence and peace to come to us. All that's needed is for us to open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts and souls in faith, and behold, good news, behold, he comes. He comes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 